comes to cattle, you can brand them with a Barb brand, a Bench brand, or a Bosal brand, which is a stripe running around the cow's nose. Or you can use a running or a swinging brand, a tumbling or a walking brand, whose lower part looks like feet. But whichever you use, from then on, you know who the cow belongs to. When it comes to men, though, it's not that easy. They don't wear brands. What herd they're running with, what loyalties they got, is anybody's guess. And I can't afford to guess. I'm Gil Paper, trail boss. Hey, Lark, wake up. I ain't sleeping. Oh, this is one day I thought it would never end. Well, it ain't ended yet for you. You gotta ride back and pick up any stragglers. Well, I might just keep on going. Quince, you realize they ain't a single, even halfway good reason a man would hire out for a drover? I don't know. You're eating pretty regular. Wishbone stew and sourdough, yeah. You realize there's a hundred towns along this trail we ain't never gonna see. Women in them, silk dressed and high heeled, colored lights, whiskey and fancy bottles. Well, Larky, you got it real bad. I ain't got it bad. I got nothing. fire. I said, that's a real nice fire. Yes, it is. You out here all by yourself? My father. Where's he? He took the wagon to the ridge. Thought perhaps he might be able to see the stones while they were still light. What stone? The ones the Druids left. I never heard of no tribe like that. They're all dead. Nearly all. That ridge is more than an hour's ride away. Dinner will be spoiled if he doesn't get back soon. shouldn't have left you out here all by yourself. Why? Well, you can't tell who's running loose on the prairie. Engines, drunk drovers. I'm not afraid. You ain't? You see, there's no oak trees around here. No, ma'am, there sure ain't. But there's... Who are you? Well, I ain't asked you who you are. I'm Maeve Lismore. Pleased to meet you. Look, there's a camp full of drovers not more than a couple of miles from here. You know, telling what might happen to you if one of them was to come across you. Nothing will. It's so empty. Let me take you into town where you'll be safe. I couldn't leave my father. Besides, I'm, I'm safe here. Sure. Sure you are. Well, that wasn't bad, was it? No, ma'am, that wasn't bad at all. Ah! There ain't no use running. Like I was saying, these four Jaspers came charging at me like... Mushy! Mushy! 
Oh, I wasn't sleeping, Mr. Wishbone. Then what was I just saying? About that red-haired guy in San Antonio, the one who snapped her garters at you. You're three girls and 600 miles off. I'm sorry, Mr. Wishbone. How are you ever going to get to become a good trail cook? What's this heat, Mr. Wishbone? Mushy. A good drover don't pay no attention to whether he's boiling or freezing. Sure is hot, ain't it? Get the coffee. Everybody else is at, Mr. Favor, except Jim Lark. Yeah, where is he? Well, I sent Quince out to tell him to pick up some stragglers over an hour ago. He'll be in. All right, so sure. Why not? Oh, he's been doing so much grabbing. <laughs> so is everybody else. You know, trail hands sure ain't what they used to be. Now you take them two that quit yesterday. Ah, forget him. Well, I wish I could. We're running long on provisions, Mr. Favor, but mighty short on sleep. We could use a half a dozen more men than we got. We'll manage. I don't know, boss. If we lose as many more, we won't. Well, I figure it's the heat. That's what I said, Mr. Favor. That's what Mr. Wishbone was saying. Who's that coming in? Mr. Wishbone, that's a lady. You're learning, son. Miss, do you mind telling us your name? Riding one of our horses. Uh, I'd like to know why. I know you. Maybe, but I don't think so. Not your name. Or where you came from. Or where you're going. Except for a little space. Don't quite understand. A little space for warmth. And then the oak tree. To die in your arms. She hurt? I don't know. Look, she couldn't have been out there alone. You better ride out and find out where she came from. Nothing to be afraid of, miss. My name's Wishbone. I'm the trail cook. How'd I get here? Well, you came riding into camp a bit ago. I don't remember anything except... You came riding in on one of our drover's horses. The drover's name was Jim Lark. Tall man, kind of dark. Yes, that's what he was like. What who was like? The man who... Came toward me. It was a knife. It's blood. Where's my father? I've sent a man out to look for who you were with. He'll bring him back. And the other man. You won't let him come near me. Don't worry about him. Oh. You lie back down, miss. <laughs> your horse. Oh, he shied at a gopher and threw me. I must have uh, cut my face on a rock. You don't have to worry about that horse, though. He'll find his way home. He already has. Well, he's smarter than I am. I wasted a couple hours looking for him. Came in with a girl on his back. She's right over there. And her story don't match yours. Which story you like best? I think hers sounds more like the truth. Making mine a lie? I think making yours a lie. She's a pretty girl, Mr. Favor. You think she's worth dying for? Draw your time in the morning. Don't push your luck. I got no quarrel with you. You can make one real easy.
boss. This is Professor Lismore. He's the girl's father. Professor and criminal fool. Where is she? He's right over by the wagon, Professor. Oh, thank you. I didn't have too much trouble finding him. Big trouble came afterwards. No trouble. I understand it. <laughs> hmm? Have you ever, uh, you ever heard of Drudge? Drudge? Yeah, Drudge. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be Druids by any chance, would you? Druids, yeah. Oh, some kind of ancient tribe, I think. Are they Indians? Uh, they're from over in Europe. Well, have they got people there still? I don't think so. Why? Well, seems the reason the professor there came out from Boston was these Druids, they, uh, and stone circles. Take stones and tow them together and make big circles out of them. Whew. All I can figure offhand is it. Professor took a wrong turn in the trail somewhere, huh? Yeah, I was thinking that too. Mr. Trayman. Huh? That professor and his daughter, there's something mighty funny about them. What's wrong? They can't remember when they last ate. And they don't care. There you are. That'll put new heart into you. Thank you, sir. It ain't fancy, but the nourishment's there. Ah, this is very pleasant. Almost idyllic in a primitive way. Yes. It is different from Boston, Professor. Implying that I should have remained there instead of roaming the Western Plains. Perhaps you're right. But I couldn't resist. Couldn't resist what? For years, reports have been brought back east from Westerners of one sort or another to the effect that they have seen druid ruins on the Texas Plains. What exactly are uh, druids, Professor? They were pagans, Mr. Favor. They worshiped dark and bloody gods in dark and bloody ways. They lived and died in England before the dawn of Christianity. They built huge altars to their gods, gray stones on which the blood of their sacrifices ran red. But they're all dead now, ain't they? Perhaps. Their blood runs in my father's veins and in mine. Well, uh, that ain't quite the same thing, is it? I wonder. They hated death. To this date, no burial ground of theirs has ever been found. They were small and weak, but they raised tremendous monuments to their strength. Not of their muscles, but of their spells and incantations. It said that they could kill at a distance, that they could destroy man or beast with horrible agony. By chanted words spoken in the dark of the moon over a flickering fire. Ain't no moon tonight. Oak trees were sacred to them. They believed that the soul of each druid lived in its own oak tree, and they laid a curse on any man who harmed such a tree. And that man died, not quickly, but horribly. And the same curse protected their sacred stone altars in their day. And it said in ours, you came all the way out here from the east just looking for them kind of stones? Believe all you've told us? As an archaeologist, a scientist, of course not. But as a human being, all I can say is that many men who have tried to investigate druid ruins have died. And no one knows why. Then wouldn't it be better to just head off in the other direction? We can't. You see, it's almost midsummer day. Well, what happens on Midsummer Day? Or uh, what's supposed to happen? They paid their respects to death. How? By offering to the dark gods as victims the fairest maidens of their tribes. By sacrifice with stone knives on stone altars. Well, this coffee's gotten stone. I mean, it's gotten cold. The altars are cold on Midsummer Day till the sun rises and the blood of the maidens runs across them and warms them. 
I better get you some fresh coffee. Anyway you look at it, them maidens just didn't get a fair deal. I think the girls were proud to be chosen. They sang as they were being led to the altar. Neath the reaching oak tree, death will come midsummer day. I give myself midsummer nice day. Nice boy. Nice figure. I she ain't got nice ideas. Shut up. You're too handy with a knife, ain't she, Lark? I wouldn't mind being cut up a little by her. Right, Lark? <laughs> It's a real beautiful song, miss. Heathens, what it is. Suppose the stones really were out here. What would be the value of finding them? The value, Mr. Favor? They would be a treasure beyond your richest imagining. Finding them would be finding a vein of the purest gold, a chest of rubies and diamonds, a storehouse of fabulous wealth. I speak, of course, in hyperbole. You, you, uh, you speak in what? Actually, they would be nothing but stones, crudely shaped and carved. But I've staked my reputation on finding them. Huh. I've lived so much in the past that sometimes I almost think it's still alive. It is. Uh, you don't really believe that. I shouldn't, I know, but I do. Past isn't dead, Mr. Favor. It's all around us. I know it as surely as I know that I'll die under an oak tree. Nonsense, Maeve. Is it, Father? Isn't that how Mother died? Your mother was killed by lightning, sheer accident. Accidents are what we call things we don't understand. The gods do. Get the hands out. Roddy, you'll have to stay here. Lark's still around. Professor, you and your daughter are going to try getting some rest. Thank you. We will, Mr. Faber. I don't imagine you will, however. Not tonight. Thunder and lightning make the beeves restless. Strange man, Mr. Faber. Yeah, he... He sure is. He's strong and patient and enduring. Like an oak. Doc. Drawing your pay in the morning, ain't you? That's right. And you're heading for the nearest town? Uh-huh. You're liable to get lonesome all by yourself. Maybe Crest and me will quit come tomorrow morning and go off with you. I don't need company. Well, you got it. We all heard what the professor said about that loot hidden in the stones. Supposing that old man's crazy. Supposing he ain't. Now, all we have to do is stay out of sight, wait until the old man and his daughter go off by themselves. <laughs> I'd like that, Locke. Well, if that old man ain't completely out of his mind, there ought to be enough for all of us. There's just one thing. You're the boss, Lark. Well, there's something else. Don't worry about the girl, Lark. Creston and me ain't the romantic type. <laughs> Time to be quitting, you know I'm short-handed. Got a sudden feeling, Mr. Favor. I guess it's the heat. Yeah, maybe. Me, I don't like Bruins. They're liable to put a curse on you. First thing you know, I'm a... Rowdy. Mm. 
someone that complains about the food so much. I eat a lot. Yeah. Now, are you just going to stand there the rest of your natural life? Mr. Wishbone? What? What's troubling Mr. Favor? Shut up. Huh? You heard what I said. I said shut up. Get out. Sure. I wonder where those Jaspers are going. I know where they're going, Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, where? Shut up. More. That's the last you'll be seeing a lark. Perhaps. You've been very kind to me, even though I've brought you nothing but trouble. You haven't brought any trouble? I've lost three of your men. You can do without them. There'll be more trouble and worse. You know, in the morning, when the, when the sun's shining, and the world's fresh and new, it doesn't seem as though night will ever come. It always does. Uh, your breakfast, my dear. I persuaded your Mr. Wishbone to give me the recipe of this stew. When we return to Boston, my dinner shall become famous. <laughs> Although it does seem rather odd to be having stew for breakfast. Hey, it's not our usual breakfast. We were up all night. All Wishbone had time for was to warm up leftovers. I see, and delightful leftovers. Oh, uh, Mr. Favor, as I discovered yesterday, the druid remains are not in this neighborhood. Do you have any idea where they are, then? Well, I have a map of sorts. It was rather impressive back east, but out here it doesn't seem to help much. However, the next most likely spot is some miles north of here. Oh? We're driving the herd north. Yes, I know that. Glad to come with us if you want to. I accept your offer gladly before you have a chance to reconsider won't. Um, you'd better keep the wagon up ahead of the herd, though. Need less dust that way. <laughs> Thank you. Father? Yes, my dear? Should we go along with him? The curse might touch him, too. Maeve, I'm beginning to be sorry I brought you along. I should never have allowed you to help me in my research. You're becoming obsessed by a ridiculous, superstitious fear. Well, if it's ridiculous, we'll laugh at it back at Boston. Yes, we shall. I only wish your sister had come with us. She's so much more sensible than you are. That's why she didn't come. I believe in your dream. Eat your breakfast. Yes, Father. <laughs> One good thing, he's keeping the herd in the trail. Wagon, too. They're split up. There ain't no stone circles on the Sedaria Trail. What a favor decides to be real helpful. He's got 3,000 head of cattle to look at. You might forget about the herd. Not him. Come on. The most famous of the Druid remains is Stonehenge on the Salisbury Plain in England. That's roughly how it's laid out. That stone is 16 feet in length. It's the altar. Sunrise on Midsummer Day, that's where the sun hits first. The victim lay bound on the altar. The high priest bent over him. And when the sun's rays struck the stone and the victim, the high priest bent over and drove the knife home. A charming custom. Why did they do it? It was a remote and barbarous age. To please their gods, Mr. Yates. Well, I'm sure glad I'm living now. 
Someone may say the same thing about our own age years from now. Oh, they couldn't. What the heck? We're different. Are we? I wonder. <laughs> I wonder where Maeve's going to. I, uh, in the wagon, I think. This outer circle is 300 feet in diameter. The inner circle is 105. frightened me. You shouldn't be out here alone. There's nothing here that can hurt me. No oak trees. Those other things could be dangerous. Not to me. You don't believe in druids and curses and oak trees, do you? Do you really believe? Yes, ever since I was a little girl, I knew. The things Father discovered... Maybe that's what's wrong. I haven't lived in the real world at all. It's all been books, fables. Why are you so angry? I just don't think your father should have brought you out here in a search for something that never was. Well, he's a very famous professor. No doubt he knows more about the dead than I'll ever know. What about the living? When I first saw you, I, I said there'd be a little space for warmth. forgotten who I am. Who am I? Just a very pretty girl. Spent too much time dreaming. <laughs> it's just a coyote. The wailing. Darkening of the moon. There were signs. Hey. To make me remember. little space. There'll be an oak tree. Now, there can only be silence between us. Only silence. Goodbye, Mr. Vick. Thank you. I certainly appreciate your taking us through first, Mr. Favor. How long will it take you to get the cattle through? Most of the day. I have to let the steers pick their own way through. Going through this shale, they could cut their hooves to shred. Well, it certainly seems a very pleasant place to wait. I'll be able to keep an eye on you, too. What could possibly happen to us in so peaceful a setting? I just want to make sure nothing does. You uh, might be more comfortable in the back of the wagon, out of the sun. I help you. May. Yes? Is anything wrong between you and Mr. Favor? No. Well, then why don't you talk to him? I said goodbye to him last night. Which was and is ridiculous in view of the fact you'll be seeing a great deal more of him. I don't think so. I think I'll only see him once again. <gasps> You're becoming impossible, Maeve. You might at least come down from the wagon. There are no oak trees here. I know.
Right there. No screaming, miss. She ain't gonna scream. You've been waiting for me, ain't you? Yes, I've been waiting for you. You drive, Professor. Come on. Where are you going? We decided we were wasting too much time waiting all day for you to get your cattle through the canyon and then traveling much more slowly than we could alone. Is it really going to make a difference if it takes you a day or two longer to find out there aren't any druids or stonehenges in Texas? Mr. Favor, we're very grateful to you for any past help, but you're hardly the man to decide our actions. May? May we go now, Mr. Favor? You get in the back, Professor. One thing a man can't argue with, a woman that don't want him. You just saved a lot of lives. Your father's, Mr. Favors, maybe even mine. Now, ain't this cozy? Get it. Father. Yes, my dear. You people are idiots. Sure, Professor. Now you tell us how we're idiots. As I've already told you, the treasure I was speaking of is archaeological treasure, not gold or precious stones. Uh -huh. I am an archaeologist, not a treasure hunter. I don't mind. Then will you kindly release my daughter and myself at once? Sure. Afterward. After what? After you lead us to the treasure that ain't a treasure. But I've already told sure. you... Sure, what else could you say? ...that I absolutely refuse to lead you anywhere. Sit down, Professor. Yeah, come on, make yourself come. Oh, 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 oh. Father! Kind of singes you a little, don't it? You're a thief and you're mad. Are you going to change your mind, Professor? There is no treasure. How can I convince you? Maybe we're going about this the wrong way. Maybe we ought to get his daughter over here. Oh. She never fired a rifle in her life. She didn't even know how to cock it. How was I supposed to know? Yeah. How are you supposed to know? It's 
three riders heading this way. The girl. Get the horses. We leave the wagon here. What difference does it make? Come on. Uh. Uh. Dying is real, and you were the only real thing in my life. You're not going to die. I met you much too late. Maybe, maybe earlier. It's an oak tree, isn't it? Yes, but it... Don't be unhappy. There never was anything else for me, except this in your arms. For a while, I, I hoped, I, uh... Now, do you ought to go on back to the herd? Somebody's got to take charge. Mr. Favor's going to want to help the professor and find the men that did this. Yeah, well, I'll go back and put Quince in charge and meet you later. Well, we'll, we'll be here quite a while. All right. Can I help you? Well, I'll ride on ahead and see if I can pick up that trail. I'm not Maeve. Then who are you? Her sister. We were born in the same hour. I feel as though half of me had died. I don't know if I did the right thing, boss, but she was back at camp when I got there. I was away when Father brought Maeve west with him. I would have never let him bring her. She believed too easily, strongly. Where's father? Rowdy, you'd better get her back to camp. Oh, no, Mr. Favor, I'm not made. I can ride, shoot. Think I can kill now. Did you ever see the map your father had? That's how I found your camp. You came up here alone? I hired a guide in San Miguel. Do you remember anything on the map that might help us? Well, there were two places marked, one in a canyon. Well, there was nothing at the canyon, Miss Maeve. The other was in the hills. My name's Mona, Mr. Favor. Yes. Maybe we ought to get going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> It's 
Doc drew it. The rumors were false. What's that say? It's Indian writing. That's all I can tell you. You better tell me a lot more. I'm not sure. It tells of death brought by the iron men who were thirsty for the tears of the sun. What's tears of the sun? Among the Aztecs, it meant... Oh, I'm very tired. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. What's tears of the sun? Gold. Locke! Unless I'm mistaken, it's Spanish armor. The kind worn by Cortez and the conquistadores. It must be centuries old. The dry air must have preserved it through all these years. The Iron Man, huh? Looks like they didn't have much luck. I think we're gonna make out a lot better. Come on. <laughs> Here's the stone. They were buffalo worshippers. They slaughtered buffalo on the stone slab. Like they did to them iron men, huh? <laughs> it's all very interesting, Professor. Now, where do we start to dig? Ah! He was snooping around. Nolan, huh? Favor must have sent him to pick up our trail. He did. It ain't gonna do him no good. Tie him up. Sure, you want him to hear the shot? Professor, it looks like we ain't gonna have much time. Now, you ain't gonna have any time at all unless you start talking. If there were any relics or treasures buried here, they would be in front of the stone. Crescent! Hey! Get on back to camp. Well, I can't stay here. You do what I tell you. I watch you die once. Let's take care of them first. We don't want the professor to get worried.
Wake up. Untie me, Professor. Untie. Get impatient, Professor. Your friend's gonna be here right away. Preston. Pull up, Roddy. Better do what he says, Roddy. Favor. Yeah. Preston's got a gun on Lismore, and from this distance, I couldn't miss Nolan. You make a move and he gets it now. All right. What do you want? Why don't you start by dropping your guns? Now take a step back. Just a couple extra hands for digging. What's the matter with you? I shot her. I killed her. Well, maybe you missed her. I didn't miss. Her. I didn't miss. Her. For a moment, I, I thought I was Maeve. But I'm not, am I? There's no way we can thank you enough, Mr. Faber. Oh, it isn't necessary, Professor. We'll go back east. Perhaps in time, we'll be able to forget. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Faber. Now, the oak tree and grave under it oh, doesn't seem quite real. I'm not Maeve, Mr. Faber. No, you're not. Better, Mr. Faber. I do what I can, Senor Faber. And he's doing all right. It ain't hurting at all. No, sir. I don't know what Senor Wishbone would do if he was here. And what did you do? I gave Senor Scarlet some medical whiskey. No wonder he ain't hurting. Only thing is, I feel terrible not being able to ride. Well, one good thing, it gives Mushy a chance to be a drover for a while. That's good. Keeps him from cooking. Well, that's good. What's the matter? What is it? Beef enchilada. A beef what? Enchilada. Ain't you never eat Mexican food? Well, I don't like to eat nothing that I ain't familiar with. Mm. Well, Jesus made it for us, and in fact, it's mighty tasty. And why does it look like it's already been eaten? <laughs> Jesus is relieving Mushy on the cooking until Wishbone gets back, that's all. 
Now, if you don't like his grub, all you gotta do is tell the boss. But most likely, if you did, he'd put mushy back on that chuck wagon, and you'd be eating mushy special stew instead of that enchilada. I like it. I like it. I am worried. About what? Maybe the men do not like Spanish cooking. Well, take a look. They're acting like they've been starved for a week. I will feel better when Senor Wishbone comes back. In only a couple days now, we'll be at Horsehead Crossing, join up with Wishbone and his friend's herd. Meantime, I could use some more food, hey, Jesus? for 20 miles or more. Hey, what's up, Pete? You can ride in here like your horse was on fire. The prairie up ahead is. Three days, forced drive ought to get us through. We'll start moving out as of right now. We'll push night and day. Scarlet, you fix sandwiches for the men. Jesus, every drover's to have a fresh horse every four hours. Si, senor. We're moving out, starting right now. They're going west, it's gonna mean we won't go through a horse head crossing. We'll worry about that later. I could only get my boot on. Somebody's got to drive the chuck wagon. May God have mercy on his soul. Amen. And I think the good Lord will. Todd Murdoch was a good man all the days of his life. Good man, good father, good friend. Well, that's all we can do or say here. Jerry, get ready to move the beeves out first thing in the morning. Mr. Favreau will be expecting us at Horsehead Crossing. We've been ready for more than a week. Well, I couldn't let Todd Murdoch die alone. Oh, we're gonna have to let his daughter know about this. You got the name of that school she goes to back east? Mm-hmm. I uh, just soon you'd write the letter. Main thing is for her to understand that we'll take care of the herd, get her the absolute top dollar for him. Yeah, I'll get that letter off tonight. Oh, I hope you don't think that I'm being taken charge too much or anything like that. Uh, see, Todd and I was friends for so long. Well, he was always talking about you. Yeah, we was mountain men together. Went through an awful lot in those days. Must be that's why he kind of left me in charge, you see. Give me the ownership paper. Oh, I ain't taking offense. I've been following Mr. Murdoch's orders for a long time. And they're still my orders, even though he's dead. Well, he sure had you pegged right. Todd told me when Mr. Favors sold the herd, you were to have an extra 10% for past services. Well, that's very nice of him. You fellows will come into something, too. Nice. Real nice. Well, I guess we might as well board up the house, get those bees ready to move. Oh, uh... I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea for me to ride on ahead and tell Mr. Favor what's been holding us up. If we're late, he'll be fit to bust a gut. Then, of course, those drovers having Mushy's food to eat all this time, they're not going to be happy either. Anyway, I want Mr. Favor to have the ownership paper so I don't have to worry about it anymore. So you fellas bring on the beeves just as fast as you can. Mr. Favor has to wait and he'll be mighty unhappy. He's not exactly a patient type. You ain't going anywhere, Mr. Wishbone, without us. He's only fooling. Only fooling with a gun? Well, that's always good for a laugh among friends. A gun never made me laugh. Wishbone don't know you like we know you. Now tell him it was all in fun. Penny, you said that we shouldn't let Mr. Wishbone go. Of course. We got used to eating good. We didn't want to stop yet. That's what he means. Now, ain't that what you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. It was all in fun, Mr. Wishbone. We got so used to eating good, Mr. Wishbone. So, you wouldn't run off and leave us behind, now would you, Wishbone? Oh, 
Of course not. What's a few more days? Mr. Faber and those drovers can just wait. Make them appreciate me more. Thanks, Wish. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, fellas, we better get our gear packed. Tomorrow morning, we all move out together? Yeah, sure. Invented horses. Well, I don't think you can rightly use the word invented in relation to horses, Barney. Well, I can think of lots of words to use, but not when I'm in the saddle. What's the matter, fellas? Saddles don't fit too good today. Well, we was just resting the horses, Mr. Fair. Oh, good, good. All right, get moving then. Uh, on foot. We'll give the horses a real good rest, huh? Two more days of forced drive before we get to beast water. No, I know. Men been in the saddle for 24 hours, though. They gotta have a rest. Boss, there's no doubt we're all tuckered out, but we know the herd's gotta be pushed on. You just say the word and we'll be in the saddle before you can get off the ground. Yeah, any man can make it in the saddle, I'll uh, give him a lift. We've been pushed this hard before, never killed any of us. Pete's right, Mr. Favor. Matter of fact, Mr. Favor, I ain't even saddle sore. A little foot sore, maybe, but. It's easier to keep going, boss. Laying around just stiffens you up. Next thing you know, I bet the lead steer is telling me how to do the job. Now, I said we need a rest. What are you all doing standing around not resting? My job is to get the herd in. Every one of them alive and as much of the crew as I can. Scarlett, you get a boot on that foot yet? See stupid bandages. All right, all right. You stick with the chuck wagon. I miss old Wishbone. You? Ain't you the one that complains the loudest about Wishbone's cooking? Well, I'm saying I miss him. I'm not saying my stomach misses him. Yeah, well, Wish probably having the time of his life before his head crossing.
car's changing in its direction. The water? Just beyond that. That's where we're going, then. You can't drive a herd through that. Can't go back, neither. Last water we was at was three days dry from here. Three days forced dry. You think the herd can make that? Why don't you just throw that bucket away? Oh, that? Oh, I got too attached to that one. Get it fixed and we get to Horse Head Crossing. Are you sure the trail boards are still gonna be there? We're kind of late. Mr. Favor will be there, don't you worry. He may be mad as a hornet with nobody to sting, but he'll be there. Probably waiting to sting me. Thanks a lot of you, don't he? Oh, yeah, what kind of a team, you might say. If you don't say it so as he can hear you. took the wrong turn. They took the wrong turn, didn't you hear me? You doing what I think you're doing, Jerry? You're wrong, Wishbone. See, those leaves are gone exactly where I intend for them to go. Wishbone, like you said, and no split for the trail boss. And no split for Todd Murdoch's daughter either, huh? I always thought you were a sly one. Well, it don't take any mental giant to figure what you're all planning to do. I'm gonna cut you in, too. Thanks for nothing. I didn't think Wishbone would be asking for a share. After all, he's honest. It's more than that. I remember Todd Murdoch. Forgot him. He's dead. Up at the railhead, these beeves will bring maybe $40 a head. That's $20,000. And none of it yours. Well, we're making it ours. Now, don't talk rough to Wishbone. Now he knows how much money there is, he might want to change his mind. Yeah, I might. I'll be honest with you, Wishbone. Oh, keep honesty out of it. Well, we're not going to make any money with that herd grazing here. Let's go. Sure. And you forgot. The ownership paper. You can't sell beeves to anybody without the paper showing you've got title. It's safe enough with me. I think it'd be safer with me. You've been honest a long time. It might be hard to break the habit. Just possible while we're out driving the herd, you might decide to take off for someplace else, like Horsehead Crossing. We're taking them away from you. Get down off that wagon. Had me fooled, Jerry. I never did think much of these other two. Get down! The dead man thought you was decent and loyal. Shut up! Decent and loyal thief. I don't want to hear anymore. Well, get used to the label, Jerry, because you're going to be wearing it a long time. Give us that paper, wishbone. Put that gun down. You kill him, and we'll never find out. Ask me, Jerry. Ask. Me. Don't tell me you're not the foreman anymore. Why don't you go easy on yourself, Wishbone? Just tell us where you put the paper. You'll never know. Never's a long time. Hey, don't go. No. The man his age, you bust his ribbon. You'll most likely kill him. He's right. We don't need to bother with him. That paper's on him or someplace in the wagon. We'll find it. Sure got 
that head someplace. Jerry, it'd be a lot quicker our way. Do what you have to do. You know, a wishbone man can stand pain for an hour, a day, a couple of days, maybe even a week. Then the pain gets stronger than he is, and he talks. No matter how much he don't want to, he just talks. You know something, Mr. Pitts? You aren't gonna have that much time. Because if I don't show up at Horsehead Crossing, Mr. Favor and all his drovers are gonna come looking for me. Jerry? He could be right. Let's make sure he ain't right. If you'd kept your mouth shut, it just might have happened. Oh, it's gonna happen all right. No. No, you're gonna write a letter to Mr. Favor. Yeah? What kind of letter? Oh, a letter saying you decided not to join up your new herd with his, that uh, you figure you can get a better price on your own. I'm not gonna write any such kind of letter. You hear that, Milt? He says he ain't gonna write any such kind of letter. If you don't, we got nothing to lose trying to find out if you can live with all your ribs busted. making such a fuss over a little old letter. After all, it isn't like I was giving you the ownership paper. Of course not. You write the letter, we'll get it to Mr. Favor, and then we'll see. You might change your mind about other things. Yeah. First, I'll write the letter, then we'll see. Steer cracks, goes bad. We'll need a substitute lead. Well, there's a red one there on the far side. He's got the makings. What do you say, boss? Yeah, he'll do. The herd's bunching up, Mr. Favor. Yeah, the lead steer went bad. Butchering. Quince, cut out the substitute lead. Get him moving at the head of the herd quick as you can. Yeah. Mr. Favor, why you gotta kill that steer for? Why don't you just put him back with the rest of the herd? How much he? The rest of the herd just got used to following that lead. No matter where you put him, the rest would just line up in back of him. I'm afraid it's just the way of cattle, or people for that matter. He's an old man. He doesn't tell us where that paper is. He ain't gonna get much older. Vinny, you know we can get rid of those beeves without an ownership paper? <sighs> to who? Skinners? All they'd give us is a lousy five dollars a head. Well, that's still 2500 and it's money here and now, not four months away in Abilene. You mean you'd be willing to settle for $2,500 instead of 20000 Jerry? Maybe he is, but I ain't. You already beat him unconscious. What more can you do? I ain't killed him yet. That sure smells good. When's that stuff gonna be ready? I'm hungry.
gone someplace. Get off that horse. As soon as he came to, he went to the back of a chuck wagon. Started rummaging around a bit and found a piece of paper. I don't know how I missed it, but it's in his front pocket. His front right pocket. This ain't nothing but a grocery list. Why, you, Mr. Never mind him. Let's get the horse. We ain't got none to spare. You haven't got any brains to spare, neither, mister. <sighs> Trying to pull an old trick like that on me. No harm done, old man. We got all the time in the world. Oh, we're gonna find that paper sooner or later. Why get yourself hurt so much? What's the matter, Jerry? You got no stomach for this sort of thing? I didn't want it this way. Of course not. You wanted it nice and easy and friendly and crooked as blazes. I got nothing against you, Wishbone. Oh, thanks. Wish I could say the same for your friends. They ain't my friends. I need their help. Once we sell the beeves, I'll never see them again. <laughs> You'll see them. Or others just like them. No, I ain't gonna stay a thief. He says just to give me a chance. I've been raising other men's steers all my life. I never had more than $20, $30 in my pocket, enough for long, neither. Only for cards or women or drinks. Year in and year out, my life passed through my hands like sand. Well, the money I get out of this, they're gonna give me a chance. Dirty money isn't gonna give you a clean life. Now, money ain't clean or dirty. Money is just money. Money is Todd Murdoch's money. He's dead. Well, his daughter isn't. She's somebody I don't know in a place I've never been. Look, if you want to be a rustler, why don't you steal from some rancher that wears a gun and can come after you instead of some dead man and his daughter? Forget me. I'm trying to save your skin. Well, forget my skin. It hurts some, but it'll get well. You want to save something, look inside your own skin. You'll find more than you can handle right there. They got more brains than all the drovers that ever lived put together. When they're hurt, they bellow. When they're wore out, they stop. Uh, Roddy said we'd better stop and rest on the spell. Where is he? He's up ahead. Move, you slab-sided mountain goat. Now! 
Look, I know. I know you beat, so am I. Now move! Last year, she spent the most trying to raise the dead. Now look, fella. I said I understand. You're beat, I'm beat, everybody's beat. Nobody, nobody thinks we can do it. But we're gonna fool them, ain't we, fella? Now you're gonna move. You're gonna move, I'm gonna break your back, buddy. Now move! a trail boss as you are, boss. That's saying a lot. Chuck Wagon sure needed fresh horses. Si, senor. Uh, the foot, it is better? Oh, it'll hold me up, especially when I get back in the saddle. It must be the cook's louse. But, senor, I... I got a note from your cookie. Senor Wishbone? Senor! Who is that? I don't know. Uh, what was the drover doing? It's like enough. It was not a drover, senor. He brings this. It's a letter from senor Wishbone. Oh, really? Let's find out how he's getting along. Dear Gil. Huh? It is what it says. It is what senor Wishbone wrote. I've been on these drives a long time with Wishbone. Never once heard him call Mr. Favor Gil. It sure don't sound right coming from him. Go ahead, read the rest of the letter. Don't expect me for the drive or the cattle, neither. Mr. Murdoch died, left the beeves to me, and I'm going to sell them on my own. Regards, G.W. Wishbone. Well, that don't sound like a wish, either. Now, he's in trouble, Pete. That dear Gill and that regards G.W. Wishbone, sure sign of it. If his herd wasn't in trouble, I'd, uh, I'd run after that Jasper and find out what's going on. Why don't you ride after him anyhow? I can't, not without telling Mr. Favor. Tell you what, I'll pass the word. Mr. Favor won't know you're gone as you get back. The rest of us will work harder to make up for it. I'm ready to ride again. So you're not the only one that likes wishbone. All right. <clears throat> I kind of hate to see him ride off alone like that. I think I'll, uh... You think you'll... With that foot like that? for a little skinny old man. You getting like months in milk? All soft and kindly? Don't you worry about it. Jerry, you getting anywhere with that old fool? Go ahead, Terry. Tell him how far you're getting with the old fool. That paper's got to be someplace. Well, find it. When? Before or after we get to Abilene? <laughs> that paper ain't worth a man's life. You're trying to get yourself killed. That's what you're doing. You're trying to make a better out of me. A man does that for himself. Just tell me where the paper is. I'll make sure they let you go. I swear, you'll come to no harm. It'd be interesting to know what you swear by, Munson. God, your honor, what? Well, now, 
thank you, boy. How did you know I was thirsty? Now, look, we can't keep on torturing an old man. Let's get rid of the beeves here and now to the Skinners so we can forget the whole business. At $5 a head instead of 40 I can't afford to take no such loss. You get my letter to Mr. Favor? Trail boss was busy. I give it to the cook's louse. This is as far as we go. You tell us where the paper is here and now, or are you going to die here and now? All right, time to the wagon. <laughs> Sounds pretty hot. I'd say unless you talk before then, old timer, you'll last maybe three hours, give or take a little. Chuck wagon or something? No, Senor Roddy. I, I thought maybe you have some trouble and I came to help. Well, if there's any trouble, we're going to be riding right in the middle of it. I don't mind. It is to help Senor Wishbone. I wouldn't want to say this way he would hear, but he's like a father to me. Yeah. Senor Scarlet's foot is very painful yet, but he is with the wagon. Yeah, something else will be painful. Well, as long as you're here, fine. The only trouble is, these tracks seem to have given out. It's the ground's too hard. If we go out ahead, maybe we'll, maybe we'll find something. Scouting on sandwiches, I'm working on it. The men are gonna have to wait. They don't seem to come out right. Well, we don't have much time to eat anyhow. Besides, nobody's got much of an appetite. Well, that being the case. Joe, we're gonna be hitting that fire in less than an hour. Now, if we find a way through it or around it, fine. But if we don't, we got to. Ain't no other way of saving the herd. That's right, there ain't. But what I want to know is if we don't get through, are you gonna be able to side one of these wagon horses and ride out? Sure. But the hardest part was getting my boot on. Well, just remember, they make the fastest horses in the world. Well, the fire burning at their tail ain't no such thing as a slow horse.
came from over there. The Senor Wishbone is in trouble. Jesus, come back here. You don't want to tease old Wishbone like that. He'll get all the water he wants once he hands over the ownership paper. Matter of fact, once he does that, we might even let him go swimming. A nice, cool, wet river. How's that sound to you? I'll see the devil fry you first. You're the ones frying, old timer. Jesus! Watch out! Hey, Time up, Jerry. Take Munson's gun, Mother. There's no reason for that. I ain't waiting for one. We're not gonna be able to circle that, Mr. Faber. Well, we're gonna keep trying. Well, there ain't a chance. Any men worried about it can cut out now. All right, then, get back to the beef. Spoken. Yeah, they're spoken because I stirred them up. What? You'll get it before I do. You drop your gun, mister, if you want the old timer here to go on living. That cuts him out. Don't look too good, though. Our chances of getting them cows to market. There's always the Skinners. The price ain't too bad if I don't have to split it with none of you. And none of you are gonna be around. Looks like he'll live to hang. Why don't you untie Jesus, huh? Don't look too good, Wish. You always have been jealous of my beard. Oh, that was a pretty quiet bunch. I had a hard time stirring them up. They never did make these canteens big enough. Why don't you shoot, Pitts? I ain't sure. I didn't like what was happening to you. But even more, I didn't like what was happening to me. They made you do it, didn't they? Just like they did me. Well, we got one to bury and one to turn over the law. 
Jerry, why don't you stick with us to drive this herd till we catch up with Mr. Favor? Sure. Yeah, that's if Mr. Favor has a herd left. Only one thing, Wishbone. What did you do with that ownership paper? Oh, I hid that real good. <laughs> there it was all the time. You know, a man looking for something hidden almost never looks right under his nose. sooner. This paper could have got washed away. Hey, you were saying something about Mr. Favor not having a herd? Yeah. Well, that was before this rain started. just the way I wanted them to. You see, I wanted them to force me to write that letter to Mr. Favor saying that I wasn't coming back to the herd. But suppose Mr. Favor would have believed it. That's exactly why I started out the letter the way I did, saying, Dear Gil. You'll excuse me, Mr. Favor. Of course, Mr. Wishbone. Because I knew the minute he laid his eyes on that dear Gil, he'd know something was mighty well wrong. Yeah, I would, if I'd ever got the letter. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you were kind of busy at the time. So you just took off from the herd without notifying anybody. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Favor. It's a good thing for me he did. Oh, I appreciate it. I do. That's why he's going to ride drag for only a week. Drag? <laughs> <laughs> Like you're done, Danny. You're letting them bees drift. I'll get them. I'll get them. Well, come on. What do they think they are doing? Well, it looks like a bunch cut out on them. They must have been riding with their heads tucked under their arms. You put somebody else on flank. Tell them I want to talk to them. I don't know. We're spread out pretty thin now, Mr. Favor. Anybody would make a little mistake. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one size of mistake. Big. Yes. Come on, Marcy, stop fiddling around. We're late getting started. Well, hurry as fast as I can.
About a cup left, still warm. What's holding you up? Nothing. You should have been rolling 15 minutes ago. Mr. Favor, have those men ever come in and found me not all set and ready? Always the first time. Well, don't you hold your breath till it happens. What's the matter with you? Did you get up on the wrong side of your sack this morning? Yeah, I guess. Well, now, what about that cup of coffee? What's the head up about? We've been through this before. That doesn't make it any easier. Half a dozen men short, and at this size, like picking your teeth with a 45. Well, those fellas that cut out weren't pulling their part of the load anyway. So now everybody else has to pull double. It's beginning to tell, and men are getting tired edgy. Well, they can just rest when we get to Mission Valley. Yeah, if those new men I telegraphed for are waiting for us. How much longer do we get there? A couple days under the week. Later, storm. Hold it, Wistful. Save one for me. What do you mean, hold it? You get it when they're getting screwed, or you don't get it at all. You think I'm doing running a short order house here? Temper, temper, temper. Well, who's mad? You are. Now, did you roll out of your bedroll wrong side this morning? Hushing! Yes, sir. <laughs> Prince uh, said you want to see me. Yeah, but up forward with the Scott usually is. Well, he's supposed to be out looking for trouble, too. Oh, what now? Well, I spied somebody yesterday. He looked like he was following the herd. And, what do you know, I found his campfire this morning up there on the ridge. Stuck pretty close. Yeah, close enough to come in and have supper with us. And, uh, unless he had a reason not to. As if we didn't have enough to worry about. All right, pass the word. Have the men watch out for him. Just what I had in mind. Everything all right in the Tavaya, senor? Oh, swell. Us, Mr. Favor? Oh, I already have. Why, those beefs cut out. That's nothing to worry about, Mr. Favor. We got them all back. Why was it even necessary to get them back? It's just one of those things that happens all the time. Well, not on any drive I boss. It only happens once. Make myself clear? Well, yes. Well, maybe because you're new with the outfit, you expect some special treatment. Huh? No, no. Good, then you won't be disappointed. All right, you two will take over a drag. Drag? Oh, now, wait Whatever you say, Mr. Favor. Come on, Danny. Oh, Joe, just a minute. Now, you knew better. That wasn't even your station. Well, uh, no, but I, uh... Well, uh you're not exactly the picture of a guardian angel. Well, he didn't mean no wrong, Mr. Favor. He's a nice kid. I hope that makes the dust a little easier to take. Mr. Favor! That's him. Sure it's the same man? I don't know about my money on it. All right, let's go. You need any help, boss? Oh, you're still riding drag. Saw us coming. 
I bet we'd waste too much time trying to find him now. I'd sure like to know what he's up to. Well, he follows us and then disappears when he sees us coming. Figures he sure ain't up to any good. Clayton and Joe Scarlet, Andre? Uh, Joe's good as asked for it. And Clayton can use a little dust to settle him down. Yeah, but Scarlet covers more flank than just about anybody else around. And Clayton's the type who maybe might quit if it gets too rough on him. I uh, can do without him. Sure can already, though. I'd rather have ten drovers and another job and do it right than an army of Danny Clayton's. Well, that ain't that bad. But... Later, Rowdy. We've got something more important to worry about now. I got a gal nine feet tall. I got a gal that ain't old. Sleeps in the kitchen with her feet in the hall. Skip to my loo, my darling. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hi, boss. You been all right, hmm? Oh, it's quiet enough around here, all right. But uh, seems to me this fella Royce has kind of got you spooked a little. Well, as long as it's me, ain't the herd. Keep your eyes open. Skip, skip, skip to my room. Skip, skip, skip to my room. Skip, skip to my room. Skip to my room. Skip Any trouble? No. I could ride this watch in a rocking chair. Like you did this morning? I'm sorry about that, Mr. Favor. Won't happen again, I promise. Any luck? Well, if he's hiding out there, he's doing it under a rock. We'll just have to wait for him to make his play. You're not going to keep a double watch all night. You've got a choice. Either no sleep or no hurt. Stay out of that rocking chair, boy. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Favor. Too bad. Lost a couple dozen head, though. Bad enough. I could take a few men and go after it. I leave us too short. We we'll just have to write them off. Why don't we go after that trigger happy friend of ours? Because we can't spare the man. And I can't figure is why he shot at Clayton. What did that prove? Well, it spooked the herd, didn't it? For what? For two dozen head? If he could round them up. Hey, uh, what those ours down there? strays, don't they? Yeah, I found them back there a ways. They're scattered all over the brush. What happened? You heard spook last night? You wouldn't know nothing about that, I suppose. Not a thing. <laughs> well, the way you've been watching us, you ought to be up on just about everything. Not last night. Camped on the flat last night. But you have been following us. Oh, sure, for a couple of days. 
Why? I'm kind of choosy about the company I keep. It's an old habit of mine. Not about to draw on an inside straight until I try on the dealer's coat. See, the way I figured, man would be a fool not to get the lay of land before he tried to move in. Move in? Well, yeah. I'm looking for a job. Gonna put me on? Come on. over in my life. And if those replacements only show up, so I can relax and enjoy it. What about him? Oh, Royce, what about him? Oh, come what? on, Clay. You're gonna get rid of him, aren't you? You're doing a good job. What for? I thought that was all settled. You're the trail boss. You can hire anybody you want. I explained why he was following us. It wasn't unreasonable. He didn't explain why he tried to bushwhack Danny. Denied that. You think he'd brag about it? Look, outside of that, that's all you got against him, except for following us for a day or two. On the other hand, he picked up most of those strays. Saved us a lot of time, money, and trouble. So you figure you owe him something, I suppose. Well, I owe him my thanks, at least. And you know how short-handed we were. Sure. But it's a great way to tie in with the outfit. <laughs> Get in good and wait for a chance to pull something bigger. It's possible. Matter of fact, I remember somebody else trying that once. You. All right, all right. Maybe I got nothing on him, but... Well, I'll bet you my last Iron Man he isn't joining this crew just for the job. As long as he does it, I got no complaints. country. Reminds me of back home. You ever been around Cimarron? Nope. Look, don't you belong back there on the flank someplace? Yeah. You know, uh, I was in a job like this a couple of years ago up near Cimarron. You ever worked the Cimarron Trail? I'll take over here. Rowdy wants more men at drag. Why me? Everybody in this outfit eats his share of dust. My share, but no more. Don't do us any favors. I won't. Ah, Clayton. You shoot any rabbits lately? Or you just want the herd to have a little exercise? How did you know about that? Well, the moon kept me awake last night. Couldn't shut my eyes. How about your mouth? There's only three things in this world that's real quiet. Falling snow, the hour just before dawn, and the mouth of a man just dead. showed up. Well, I can't say I was itching to come. Well, I figured this was just the spot for you, being as you're so good at rounding up strays. Keep moving, and while I'm in the valley, it's settled by sundown. You want me to kiss him goodnight, too? You get him, you'd like. Well, everything's running smooth. I think we'll make it by sundown. It's amazing how efficient a crew gets once they smell a night on the town. Yeah, most of them, that is. What's that mean? Royce. Oh, you too? And what's your headache? Well, I ain't got no headache. It's just that 
He ain't going out of his way to be exactly friendly. You want a friend, you join a social club. Now get him bedded down. In your favor? The sheriff wants to see you. Sheriff? See from the town Cactus Wales. He's at the chuck wagon. Oh, Lord, what, what kind of a law you suppose we broke now? Well, it's probably just the usual welcome extended to all drovers. Get out of my town. Yeah. Nah, nothing like that, Mr. Favor. We don't mind drovers one bit. Why, if it wasn't for you boys, hardly nobody would come to Cactus Wells. Besides, saloons can use the business. Well, those are sure the places that'll get it. Anything special on you, my sheriff? Yep. I'm looking for any one of these gents. Outlaws, all of them. Outlaws? Why come to us? Well, I got me a system, Mr. Favor. A man riding alone is more liable to attract attention than a man riding with a crowd. Makes sense? Well, it's a system, all right. It looks like it works, too. Oh, what's that? Simon Royce. You know him? Seen him? He's one of my drovers. Where is he? Go get him. Mr. Favor, I'm the man he's looking for. Better come along with me, Rice. Well, until you've read these, Sheriff. What's all this? Well, that's an affidavit from the judge. It tells all about the trial and my acquittal. Acquittal? Read what it says. Well, as far as I can see, anybody could have written this. Yes, sir, but not anybody would print up a newspaper, and that's why out of the Tulsa Weekly tells the story of the whole trial. I always carry these with me, Mr. Favor, otherwise I get picked up once a week. We've got to get this thing straightened out. It seems plain enough to me, Sheriff. Your fly is a little out of date. Maybe. But I'd better check with Tulsa just to make sure. You do that. He ain't going nowhere. I'll take those you don't mind. Well, if that's all, Mr. Favor, I'll get back on the job. Go ahead. on your mind, Sheriff? I guess not. Seems to me you ain't too particular about your crew, him being an ex-convict and all. Man's pedigree is his business, not mine. Up to you. See you boys back in town. Clay. Yeah. Seems I was better down. You and Roddy take out the night off. Then uh, the rest of the crew take off. When do you expect the new hands? Should be here now. You go into town with Route 8 tonight, see if they're waiting around there. What's the matter? Ain't nobody got nothing to do? Uh, we just wondered, Mr. Favor. When those new drovers show up, you still figuring to keep Ross on? What? Might be somebody's got some objections? Might be. What for? Because he's an ex-convict? No, not that so much. What then? Well, uh, there, there's just something funny about him. Way he keeps watching all of us, like he's looking for somebody. Say it straight out, Joe. He just plain sticks in our craw. That's the way it is, boss. He don't get on with us, and we don't get on with him. Since when in the ever-loving world was you ever paid to like each other? Iron ain't a community project. It's my decision. He does his job, he stays. Any more objections? Good, then we can consider this little meeting adjourned and get back to work. Just surprised you didn't put your two cents worth in. The boy said it just fine. And my bet still goes. Double. Just as glad to settle down as we are. 
You're not worried, are you, Mr. Faber? Oh, as you say, you're a little curious. I didn't kill my wife, Mr. Faber. I'd come out in the trial. She killed herself. It's rough. Yeah, it must take a lot to turn a gun on yourself. You either got to be very brave or awful scared. Sick, maybe? Maybe. Anyhow, I figure she made up her mind before I caught up with her. Caught up? When you read what it said on that flyer, I was sent up on a manslaughter charge. Helen Mead only been married a little less than a year. Sent me away for seven years. Well, when I got back, she was gone. Ran off with another man. Well, uh, I can't blame her, though. They say he was a lot younger than me. After all, being alone for seven years, I guess she just couldn't wait it out. Many men would be that generous. Well, it's better than believing that she just didn't want me no more. Well, after a couple of months, I, I caught up with her. She'd even changed her name. She was in Tulsa, alone. She'd gotten about as low as a woman can get. Must have been a rough meeting for both of you. No, it was worse for her. I wanted to forget all about it and start all over again. She wouldn't have no part of that. She just put me out. The last time I ever saw her. I guess she shot herself right after I left. How come they accused you of killing her then? Man with a record, that just comes natural. Took him a couple of weeks to catch up with me, and that was the first I heard of it. Of course, I straightened all that out in the trial. Since then? I've been looking. Looking? Looking for the man who left her. So Clay was right. You didn't join the outfit just for the job after all. He's a drover. After he left Tulsa, he drifted west to Texas. He joined up with a herd on the Good Night Loving Trail. That'd be your outfit, Mr. Favor. Know who he is? I don't know his name. I don't even know what he looks like. But if he's here, I'll find him. That is, if you're still here. Here? Out there? Someplace? I'll just be hanging around like before. You can't stop me, Mr. Favor. My wife's dead. And somebody in this outfit's gonna answer for it. Time for seconds. Come along, move along, move along. Got to get the rest of the fellas in here. Let's go. All right, what is this? All of a sudden, you expect me to wait on you? <laughs> you don't think for one minute we're going to settle for that and we get a good meal in town, do you? Good meal? Well, when you get Tomaine, don't come to me for help. At least it'll be better tasting Tomaine than what you dish out. You going to town, Quince? Gone it, I'm sorry. Best you keep your eyes open instead of your big mouth. Yeah, well, how about keeping those big things out of the way then? You through that? What brand of pole can't they squeeze that out of? That's the most expensive lotion you've ever seen. Two dollars a bottle. Come all the way from Paris, France. Oh, and it's all in steam, too. Well, you gotta use something strong. Drown out the smell of that herd. Me, I'll take cow. I never would have guessed. Mm. 
Fix you a plate, Mr. Clayton? No, thanks. Not tonight, Mushy. If the new men ain't there yet, you send a telegraph to Paul Freeman at this address. Ask him what's holding them up. Gotcha. I'm ready when you are, Roddy. Hey, that's what I call a real big city drover. Oh, now, be you decked out for? Cactus Wells ain't no El Paso boy. Females is females, no matter where they hang their hat. Hey, a lady killer. Yeah, even smells kind of fancy. Probably scare up more flies than women. Roddy, if you play your cards right, I may even cut you in. Oh, looks like you got some competition for a change, Roddy. Yeah, well, I might not uh, smell so fancy, boy, but experience, you know. Experience? Roddy, you're looking at the granddaddy casting over the whole Southwest. I'll bet you I've kissed more girls than you've ever seen. He talks a heck of a game, doesn't he? Not only talk. Someday I'll show you my little address book. There ain't a town kicking that hasn't got some girl just waiting for Danny Clayton to come back. Hey, you really been around, haven't you? Yeah? I, uh... I don't suppose you've ever been down Oklahoma way, have you? Oklahoma? Sure. Even hit Missouri, Arkansas. I've been all over. Cimarron Trail, Tulsa? Yeah. Look, Ruddy, you and uh, Danny better get rolling, huh? No, no hurry. You ever come across a girl named Helen? Helen? Oh, I suppose so. I mean, Sally, Mary, Helen. <laughs> I get them kind of mixed up. Look, Grace, you, you should be going out night hawking now, huh? I got the time, Mr. Favor. Helen Rogers, she called herself. She was uh, kind of small, real pretty, had brown hair. Rogers. Helen Rogers. Helen Rogers, yeah. Oh, I remember her now. You know her too, do you? Yeah, Clayton. I know her too. What's going on? Well, he was gunning for me. <clears throat> You're going into town, get going. I can't figure it. What do you want to gun me for? Uh, he was just looking to gun anybody, Danny. One thing for sure, he probably won't be with this outfit any longer. Let's go. Yeah, you couldn't have been any faster if you'd known he was gonna do that. I knew. I'll talk to him alone. I think you found him, huh? Uh, you heard. I heard a kid blowing his own horn. Everything he said adds up. To what? Another manslaughter charge? Is that all you need to kill a man? What kind of excuse did he have for killing my wife? He didn't. Come on, face it, Royce. She shot herself. On account of what he did to her, it's the same thing. You still don't know Clayton's your man. <sighs> you kill him, you'll never be sure. I'm sure. What about the next loudmouth punk that comes along? And the one after him? Well, it'll never end, Royce. You'll have to kill them all. Royce? Think I can cover the whole end of the valley myself? You're supposed to be on watch too, ain't you? All right, Mr. Favor, it'll keep for the time being. Well, are you coming? It's my fault. I ain't held him up. All right, go on. And nothing you'll be needing it for. for me tonight? Well, of course not, Mr. Favor. I'll need another Nighthawk. Nighthawk? Yeah, I wouldn't bother you, except uh, we're a little bit short. Well, that's all right. Glad to help. What? Uh, any special place, Mr. Favor? Yeah, the south side, near Royce. All right. And uh, you keep a sharp eye on him, huh? Now, if he leaves his post, you tell Kilroy to follow him, and you come back and tell me, all right? Well, sure thing, Mr. Favor. Uh, uh, thank you. I'll do my dog goodness. Mm. Nice quiet evening, huh, Mr. Royce? Oh, hi, Mushy. 
You lonesome or you're just scared of the dark? Gee, I don't know what you mean, Mr. Royce. I'm just trying to do a good job like Mr. Favor wants. Oh, that's fine, Mushy. You just do a good job. Company. Well, now I'll have a little bit of both since they're both so fine. Myself, when I can't sleep, I get out my letters book. That way, instead of counting sheep, I just end up counting. Well, do you want to talk about it or do you want to try to run that grizzly down yourself? Hmm? Royce. Grizzly? Roy's more like a bar of soap on Saturday night. Not much to hang on to. <laughs> you hung on to him all right, right in the belly. I had to. He meant it. Yeah, he was gone for Danny. Why? He's got his reasons, or at least he thinks he does. Point is, I knew about it this afternoon. Oh, not that he was gunning for Danny, but somebody in the outfit. Well, why don't you just get rid of him right then? It wouldn't have done any good. He had just hung close to the herd anyway. By letting him stay on, I could keep an eye on him. Maybe even find out who he is after before he found out himself. Well, that makes sense. But much the way it turned out, I'm worse off than I was before. If I let him go now, he'll just pick Danny off from ambush somewhere along the line. Can't let him stay on, neither. I'd have to ride herd on him 24 hours a day. Well, how about telling the sheriff? Ain't no law against threatening, just doing. Well, Mr. Favor being a trail boss is one thing, but blowing Gabriel's horn and trying to grow wings at the same time is something entirely different. Huh? Well, why don't you just tell Clayton about Royce, the whole story, then back off and let them fight it out. It isn't any of your business. They're working for me. It's my business. Not when it comes to a killing. Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor! Come on, he's Mr. Royce, you let out! You send somebody after him? Well, that's just it. I didn't even see him go. What? Well, one minute he was there and the next he... How long ago? Maybe a half hour, maybe a little more. Well, what took you so long to tell us? Well, I tried to find him. I, I couldn't believe it at first. I looked everywhere. Nighthawk. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry, Mr. Paper. Look, if Roddy gets back before I do, tell him I went into town. Tell him why. Hey, look. We got work to do. I'm all out of water. All right, Mr. Wishful. Now, come on. This isn't your fault. Yes, it is, Mr. Wishbone. I didn't do what I was supposed to. Mr. Royce got loose on account of me. Now, we don't know he did it. Could have been an accident. Well, you don't believe that, Mr. Wishbone. Nobody does. Well, just stop blaming yourself. Now, go on. Give me some water. It's all finished. We dug about 50 yards back there. Good. All we have to do is wait for Mr. Favor. And I still can't figure it out. Last we saw Danny, he was walking out of the saloon with the prettiest looking redhead you ever seen. When was that? 
Well, it was earlier. Uh, we waited around for him and figured he preferred the redheads company to ours. Was he drinking much? Well, more than everybody else. I don't know about later, though. No, I wish this, uh, this wasn't no accident. I didn't say it was. Coffee left with you. Yeah, plenty. You see the sheriff? Yeah, he's forming up a posse. The time they get Morgan, Royce could be in New Mexico. Seen Clay? Nope. Afraid there's not much hope there either. Boy, it's just had too much of a head start. Something on your mind? Yeah, Wishbone says you knew what Royce was gonna do all along. To a point. You kept him on? Well, I'm sure Wishbone filled you in on the rest of it. Yeah, all except about you sending Mushy to keep an eye on him. Yeah. I'm afraid that might have been a mistake. Yeah, and you know what you always say about making mistakes. Yeah. I remember. Why don't you lay off? Can't you see he feels bad enough already? Well, Danny Clayton can't feel a thing. Senor Favor, Senor Clay and the others are coming back. I think they have Royce. What's going to happen, Mr. Wishbone? Well, we'll turn Royce over to the sheriff. But then what? Well, the law takes over. They'll give him a trial and decide whether or not he's guilty. Well, we know he did it. Maybe. The law's got to say so. Flash, this horse is gone lame. Well, Royce? What do you want me to do, start crying about it? I couldn't be happy unless they killed him myself. You must be feeling real fine, then. When I kill a man, I do it to his face. You left the herd last night. You waited for Danny in the road from town, you bushwhacked him, then you tried to make it look like an accident. I'd save it for the sheriff, Clay. No, sir, he's gonna tell it to us. The trail drive's got its own laws. There's no reason why we can't try him. Yeah, if it's her business, this is murder. We got that right, too. Not as long as the law's around to take care of it. Looks like you've got a full-blown mutiny on your hands. Could be worse than that. They go through with it, each and every one could be up for murder. Now, if I know Rowdy and Clay, they'll go through with it. They do. They better figure on digging two graves. One for Royce, the other for me. Now listen to me, all of you. Now look, Mr. Listen! Now this ain't a trial, it's building into a lynching. You got your minds all made up and without proof. Well, how much more do we need? He tried to kill Danny right here in camp. Even told you he was gunning for him. You don't know that he accomplished it. Besides, Danny was drunk, he'd always been careless, so it could have been an accident. What about a couple of days ago when the herd almost stampede? He tried to ambush Danny. I didn't shoot Clayton. He was shooting at shadows. Besides, why would he want to kill him then, when he still didn't know Danny was the man he was after? And don't forget, you want to take things into your own hands, be judge and jury. You got to go whole hog. Be executioner, too. Well, what are we supposed to do? Let him go. Now, turn him over to the sheriff. Let the law take care of it. One last thing. I know a lot of you think I throw my weight around too much. That's part of being a trail boss. Boss is right. Herd moves, the trail's easy. When he's wrong, beef and men are lost and hurt. Either way, it falls back on his shoulders. So if I made a mistake about Royce, it's up to me to correct it. My way. All right, Royce. Let's get moving with the sheriff. <laughs> the 
sure is nice to see how some of you fellows are smartened up all of a sudden. They still say Royce killed Danny. Well, maybe. That's for the judge and jury to say. Now, how'd you like your crow? Boiled or fried? I'm baked to be just fine. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Sure could have been tight. I'm afraid the sheriff ain't gonna be any easier on you. Oh, now, come on, Mr. Favor. No point in you taking me in. The same thing's gonna happen. You showed him how it was an accident. Showed him how it could have been an accident. That's what it was. Is this under the saddle? A joya bear? Well, I just got stuck there. Even under the saddle blanket? Uh-uh. You put that under there to keep that horse running. He wouldn't have moved with a dead weight hanging from the stirrup. And the battering Danny took could cover the beating you gave him. You can't prove it. Well, it ain't up to me. It's up to a regular judge and jury. So you know it all the time, huh? Let's go. did do it. Sure. I met him on the road coming back from town. He was so drunk he didn't recognize me. He didn't know why I was beating him up. How much he? Oh, now, come on, Favor. You know better than that. Let's go. I can, Mr. Favor. Fine, Mr. Favor. I, I wanted so bad to make up for letting him go. You did fine, my sheep. Just fine. I couldn't shoot. Couldn't shoot anybody, I guess. Let's just hope you never have to. Those new men. Oh, they're gonna work out just fine. I'll say, boss, um, about Royce. Well, uh, we were all wrong, and the boys wanted me to tell you, so, uh, oh, I'm telling you. So you've told me. Now keep him moving. What do you think that is? Well, one thing sure, Jesus, it ain't no alligator. You better go get the boss. See.
got some fever. Don't seem like anything's broke. He must have just bellied up. Well, some blankets and some of my stew will fix him. Queen Scarlet, give to Lizanne. Drag him over to the chuck wagon. Boss. Where I grew up, leg irons meant only one thing. Chain gang. Is there any striped suit? If there was any. By the time you get through talking about this man's past, he isn't going to have any future. Now he needs help, and now. Uh, well, I said to drag him over to the chuck wagon. Mushy, hot up the fire. Yes, sir. Say, so you want me to send a man up to Split Rock? It's a 60 mile ride. For what? I'll bring back a sheriff. The way I see it, all men and play guys used to go together. Can't you at least wait and hear what the man's got to say? Well, there might be trouble, though. So we got trouble. Roddy. Hmm? Let's just say that uh, I don't like chains. Not even when they're broken. All right? Fight about. How's he doing? Well, fever's about broke. He'll be coming out of it any minute. Well, fine. Hey, maybe now you can spare some time for mushy stew. Mushy fix stew? Well, I'm uh, guessing that's what it is. Hard to tell for sure. Oh, turn my back. That's all I gotta do. Just turn my back. What do you call that? A slum gullion, just like you make it, Mr. Wishbone. Just like I make it. Since when did I ever make stew out of bare bones and potato peelings? All the time. More smart remark out of you, and I'm going to part your hair from the ankles up. Oh, it's wonderful having Wishbone back on the job again. Oh, yeah, it's so peaceful. It must be because his patient is... Boss? <laughs> Stand clear. Hey, uh, let's drop that thing, huh? No, none of you. Come any closer. Nobody's gonna hurt you. There ain't an axe in the world that can beat a boat, mister. You better put that down. Yeah, I'll put it down. I'll pick it up and put it down all night for you. After you let go of them gun belts. All right. You know, uh... You think I'm a bluffing. You just keep on coming. Look, who you are and what you are, it ain't no never mind to us. That's your problem. It's a cattle drive, not a courthouse. So you got two choices. Use that axe, you'll end up back in the river where you come from. Or you can drop it, 
Come on in and have something to eat. Well, might be. I mistook you for someone else. It might be I didn't. But, like you said, a man's a fool to buck a house tiger on an empty stomach. Some of the broth. Yes, sir. Now, uh, who are you, mister? Jagger. Boulevard Jagger. This is Wishbone, our cook. Roddy Yates, Ram Run. I'm the trail boss, Gil Favor. Cook, Ram Run, boss. <laughs> Even sounds like a cattle drive. <laughs> I'm... Uh, I'm sorry about the axe. I guess I made a mistake. Couldn't hurt, Mr. Wishbone. It's the only way to steam a fever and bone out. You always travel with iron ballast? Only when I drag my foot, Mr. Ramrod, I forget what I am. What are you? I'm a walking, talking, traveling Tennessee sharecropper with a itch in my sitting pocket, a yard wide hole behind my belt, and a ten color rainbow between my ears. Uh, if you're up to it, uh, we'd appreciate some straight answers. I'll see if I can't find something more to fill that hole behind your belt. I like starting with the leg iron. <clears throat> Leg iron ain't a beginning. It's an ending. Well, then, uh, why don't you start wherever you want? <laughs> wherever I want, Mr. Favor. Mm. Might be, should be the time the land got so poor, took two roosters to crow once. <laughs> I decided to put myself out of my misery. Scared my old pistol wouldn't work. So I got me a gallon of coal oil, a piece of rope, a bottle of rat poison. Rolled me out of the lake under the branch of a tree. Run the noose around my neck. Poured that oil all over myself. Ate the rat poison and set myself afire. Figuring to shoot myself just as I kicked the boat out from under my feet. Well... <laughs> That fool pistol shot the rope in two. I fell in the river, put the fire out, got the choking and throwed up the poison. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, I figured my luck had to turn the other way. So I just picked up one foot and put the other one down behind it, and that's where it started. Poor ignorant. Little old dirt digger from Tennessee trying to put a set of traces on sundown. Well, dreams like that bust slow. Mine didn't come apart till I tried to talk my way past a six-bit bill in a saloon back down the line of ways. Argument started. Finished in front of a sheriff. A man said, six dollars is 60 days. And me, six great big bits in the hole already. <laughs> Work it off on the bond, they said. Ranch work, 60 days, and then you can keep on traveling. Well, since anything's better than four walls, nine bars, I made my mark and took the ranch. And 60 days I put in. And then I allowed us how I'd start traveling again. But this here rancher, he sees it different. Figured I owed him more time. And to make sure he got it, I got this. <laughs> but it wasn't strong enough to hold this traveling man. I busted that chain and started to run. Didn't stop till I hit that river. That's when you woke up with an axe in your hand. There's a thing about being your own man, Mr. Amrod. Like the feel of a swamp still tangle leg when it first hit your middle. A 
belly full of fireflies. Come slow to me being born with another man's collar around my neck. Get my weaning on black snake whips and back busting work from can to can. Can to can? Yeah. Work from the time you can see in the morning till you can't see no more in the night. All us sharecroppers got for it were do notes at the company store. The back of the platter's had. But that's done now. Put it behind me when I took the traveling and found me a place in the sun. And I figure I earned my belly full of fireflies. There ain't any man big enough to chase him away. Uh, yup. Maybe, mister, but I never seen a man could travel very far without a belly full of real food. Now you can go right ahead. Amen, Mr. Wishbone. I feel like I could wear myself to a jackass's jawbone before you could rattle a pot. <laughs> There's a town a couple of days up the trail. There's some law there, and uh, you can settle whatever uh, you might want to get settled. You're welcome to go along with us, you want. Well, <laughs> victuals like this passing around, a man deserves to be hoeing rocks if he walked away. <laughs> I see. Pick him up some clothes. Yeah, he can ride in the supply wagon. I'm much obliged, Mr. Faber. Oh, yeah, and, uh, I'll have Jesus see about those uh, irons. You want anything more, you just holler. I'm hollering, Mr. Wishbone, loud and clear. I'll hot up the pot. <laughs> oh, is it? Look again. Well, what is it? What's so heavy that you got on your mind? Uh, probably nothing, but. Uh... I don't know. I never heard of anybody hiring out for bond around here. At least ways this side of the Mississippi. That's funny, Finn. I never heard of anyone around here using leg irons for anything, either. Tell him to lie still, but he won't mind. Don't that hurt? No more than toenail paring hurts you. Sure looks like it ought to hurt. Well, he's a drink pouring, Mushy. If we don't cut it off, it's going to wind up growing right in his eye. Okay. Go drink, Moose. Sometimes you never can tell, Mushy. Sometimes it gets them up here. Hornage. Hornage? <sighs> That's a good one. This iron is as hard as a miser's heart. Or a two-faced gal smile. I know one like that down Nashville way. That female had a look that could stop the big river right in its tracks. <laughs> An old saying, senor. There is no evil which may not be turned into good. And this thing, there can never be anything but evil. Evil and good is a smart man's right and left. Words don't count for nothing, boy. Unless you use them like a gun. The only thing that matters is who's on the other end of this. Favor, I feel tall enough to get a haircut and have her and a shoe shine way down below. Yeah, well, first things first. By the time we get this herd moving. Well, that's me, Mr. Favor. Fastest talking, longest walking, traveling man in this. Friends of yours? 
two things a traveling man never collects. Money and friends. Third's all set to move out, Lord. That might be, but uh, I'm afraid we're not. At least not yet. Something I can do for you? One thing. A horse. You name your own price. I'm sorry, uh, remounts ain't for sale. They'll be walking. At the end of this. Uh, we do our own roping around here, thanks. Now, who are you? What do you want? You got a name to go with that mouth? Oh, yeah. David. I'm trail boss here. Right, Mr. Favor. My name's Harger, Matt Harger. Me and my brothers, Luke, Billy Bob. We've been in the saddle 12 hours straight tracking something belongs to us. We just found it. You put that on me once. You ain't gonna do it again. This side of a six foot hole. Maybe you'd better take it with you. Because I'm afraid that's all you're gonna take with you. It's all in your boss. We're ready to pull out. Man said pick it up. If I was you, I'd take his advice. Till now, this was private. You step in the middle, it'll cost. Why? I should have bond jumper mean that much. Is that what he told you? I ain't running from no bond cowboy. He's running from a white-headed, bent-legged old rancher. A stubborn old fool that got tall talked out of the bed and board by a, a poor mouth, raggedy, dirty guy. A few dollars he had in a coffee can. That old man took a pistol with him. Ain't much of him left to keep alive. When we rode out, he was still sucking air. Uh, sure, we helped the sheriff track him down. Helped put that iron on him, too. Because we wanted to make sure that he'd be around for the circuit judge. We stopped helping him. We left the sheriff alone with him. It wasn't an hour until that old sheriff had an eight-inch hole in his back. His prisoner was gone. Asking us to believe that uh, you came after a man like that alone? Where's your posse? Back in Morgan County, waiting. But they come along because this is personal, like I said. That old rancher, what's left of him, he's our old man. Comes easy, don't it? All you gotta do is say it, it comes out pure gospel. Jagger. On your own land, wear a string tie, and there ain't no need for writing in books or a big stone law house. Just make your own right. It always comes out of the last and true. Huh. Sure, I killed a man. I used cold steel, too. Back in them Tennessee mountains, they called knives bayonets. I got so good at it, old Billy Breckenridge, he put a pair of stripes on my great coat I was wearing. What did it change? I was still just a poor mouth dirt digger. Bleeding in somebody else's fight. But not good enough to come calling at their parlor door. I lied, Mr. Favor. I'm not a traveling man. I'm traveling trash. I could sprout wings, grow me a halo, and holler up the day of reckoning. And it wouldn't change nothing. I'm just back county dirt digging trash. You take him back to Morgan County. What's gonna happen without the sheriff to take over? What should have happened the first time we run him down? That's why we brought this along. So we could think on it all the way. Nope, I'm afraid he'll have a mite longer to think on it. You see, I told him he could go along with us as far as the marshal had split rock. And that's the way it's gonna be. Favor? Tell your story to the law. I can't settle this any more than that piece of rope can settle it. All right, Mr. Trail Boss. You took your spot right in the middle. Just remember, the men, you're hurt. They're sitting on it with you. Look on it, traveling man. Close your eyes, you'll still see it. It'll still be there, waiting for you. No 
split rock, no law. Like I said, he's ours. What are you standing around for? We've got a herd to get across the river. You want me to spell it out for you? Marshy, get that other wagon moving. Mr. Faber, thank God, don't come easy to me. Especially the second time around. But I'm deeply obligated. Save it for your split rock. You may need it. Oh, and what I said for them goes for you, too. Why, you think I might try to run off? <laughs> Not with my own personal army in three squares, I ain't. You can bet on that. I am. Yesterday it was just him, today it's different, isn't it? What does that mean? Parker was right. You're putting the whole herd on the block just for one man. You got a uh, better way out? I got a better way out. Send him up to Split Rock, or else have the, the marshal come down here. Until it's more than just two sides to a story. Leg iron earns him that much of an edge. Now, do you think we can get moving? Sundown tomorrow, latest. What about you? I left my rope down there, boy. Just want to make sure I don't get lost. Sundown tomorrow. Now get going. He saw the woman and she looked so fine. He said, if I had my way, he said, if I had my way, he said, if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. Read about Samson from his birth, the strongest man that ever lived on earth. Read away down in ancient times, he killed 3,000 Philistines. He said, if I had my way, he said, if I had my way, he said, if I had my way, I'd tear the bill. Oh, earmarks of revival meat. Singing don't make saving. It'll take more than a little toe tapping to revive some of the drovers we got on this drive. Except you, of course. Naturally. Except for the halo and the harp, I'm the 10th generation Gabriel. Uh-huh. So that's why that horn of yours goes off so often. Mr. Favor, if you're referring to the fact that I lose my temper from time to time, you got to realize that somebody's got to keep those lead-headed drovers from eating the wheels right out from under this chuck wagon. Where's Ryan? Took a little ride. Said he wanted to see that Harger fella some more. Oh, it's about time that boy learned a man like Harger. Conversation. Just add up to a waste of time. Mr. Favor, about twice a day for the last five years, I've been listening to a trail boss friend of mine preach his own pet cattle drive sermon. There's one rule, and only one rule, when it comes to pushing a drive. The man and the herd come first. Won't matter if it's St. Peter himself coming at you. If he's packing trouble, you go the other way. I don't care how you slice it. That traveling friend there is trouble. It don't matter whether Rowdy's right or wrong. Point is, he's just following the advice of that trail boss I made. My way, he said, if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. 
He called a little boy about three feet tall. Say, place my hands up against the wall. He placed his hands up against a wall. And he tore that building down. He said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. <laughs> what took you two so long? Oh, that old two corn steer just wouldn't settle down. This steer, he uh, giving you some trouble? Uh, worse than that, got half the herd walking on eggs. Gets it in his head to start running, he just might take the whole bunch with him. Sounds simple. Just fix him so he can't cause trouble. I tell you, Jagger, there's three things around here that can't be fixed. Mushy's head, wishbones cooking, and that droop horn steer. All right, who's got the cars? I'm going to go. Come on, let's go. Wishbones got him, I think. Let's go. I'm ready for that. She's squeezing the spots. Isn't going to change too many. Well, I bet a dollar. A dollar? What do you think we are, St. Louis bankers? I said a dollar, and I bet a dollar. Are you put up or shut up? Put up or what? You heard the man wish. No, just put the green where the funnel is. Funnel? He's uh, having a nice ride? Uh, mostly long. Didn't find Harker anyway. Sort of kind of didn't think you would. Well, one thing's for sure, he'll be back. A man like that don't give up easy on what he's after. Might be you'd like to give Mr. Matt Almighty Harker his way. Is that it, Mr. Ambrod? Depends on the price tag, Jagger. Big or small, there isn't any price routing. That's the way it's gonna stay. Unless, of course, you change it, Jagger. Me, Mr. Favor? He was told to stay with a supply wagon. Well, just trying to help. Where in my keep, you might say. That cow that's been giving Mr. Quince, Mr. Scarlet, all that trouble, uh, along with the short horn, he ain't gonna bother you no more. Meaning what? Why, I just walk him down, went out of the herd, and cut his throat. That way he isn't about to cause a ruckus. I borrowed one of your knives, Mr. Wishbone. Didn't hurt it none. Wiped it off, couldn't clean. Closed up. Everything's fine except one thing. Mm. He's back. With company. Was that you said about a price tag? We'll turn him in here. Pull everybody off the herd and get him over to the wagons. Look, boss. Now, Rowdy, now. You better get inside, Mr. Jagger. Why, Marshy, don't you know? Man's got friends. There ain't no need to hide. There he is. Setting like a pigeon on a rail. What are we waiting for? Let's take him. Wait. We ain't got nothing against them Texas Samaritans. At least not yet. Man sets down to play, takes the cards away they come. Them cowpokes just got... They ain't going nowhere. That jagger ain't worth a shooting fight. At least he's not to them. 
Might be seeing's all the believing they'll need. Hold the boys here where the believing's easy. Might be I can make them see sense. Kia! I told you, Trail Boss, I'm back. In one way or another, we mean to take what we come for. It stands, Hager. Listen, you've got a badge with you up there. Dagger stays put until the law takes it over. Boys brought back the word. Pa's dead. Him and that sheriff each had 60 hard years out here. They deserved better than they got. There's a law on that, too, Favor. Now think on it. Think on it real good till sunup tomorrow. Because we'll be coming in then. You stand in the middle, you'll be standing in the middle of a cemetery. Sun up, Favor. Stay with him until you hear different. Hey, Seuss, as soon as you get the Remuda squared away, you get out to the herd, too. Favor? Just like the good book says, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. What their men won't do to keep their lives alive. You've done the right thing, Mr. Fable. Ain't no other way to cure him. Wasted up here. Better start doing your cooking now. It's gonna be a long night. Boss. Uh, I know, I know. It's not our fight. Not that it makes any difference, but you were so right. Oh, that makes a difference. Hey, Mr. Favor. Keep all the men in the saddle. Make it look like we're getting ready for fireworks come sun up. That ought to hold off Harger long enough. Mr. Favor? What I said still goes. Well, it'll be sooner instead of later. As soon as it gets dark, you and me are riding for Split Rock. By the time Harger and his boys catch you on, you'll be standing alongside the law. Either that or starting a fight that nobody can win. Any objections? Anything say, Mr. Faber? Come on, Wish. Let's get moving. I'll be back as soon as the herd's bedded down. I gotta hand it to you, Mr. Ramrod. Push long enough and hard enough, the man's just bound to get his way. Come on, Jagger. It's still an hour before sundown. You can make yourself useful. Don't hate the team. Something to bandage him with some water, will you? It was Jagger. Yeah, I know. I'll square it, Wish. No. 
Don't put that man on your conscience. Already he is. Gonna be all right, Mr. Wishbone? Of course I'm not gonna be all right. Go get me the cooking wine. Is he gonna be all right, Mr. Rowdy? Well, just don't fix him that cooking wine, Will. Go ahead. And put something on that head.
Don't move. Don't even think. Just drop it. Mr. Favor, you gotta have some cat in your family tree. No. That old man, he means so much. <laughs> First the cat and you got me, now it's got your tongue. <laughs> the knife, down there. knife on him. Why? Because he got in my way. Standing between me and my sunset. Because he... he tried to show me the light. <laughs> Preach. It makes my gut turn over. Just like that old rancher and that fool lawman. Little, loud, lousy men trying to fit me on their own straight and narrows with their three-day-old handouts and back door sermons. Pat him on the head. Boot him on his way and wipe the slate clean with lye soap and a shiny, clean conscience. It don't get down with me, Favor. I've been someone else's man since the day I took a first step. But not anymore. Not since I set my sights on a sunset with my name on it. I take what I want. And I use whatever rules fit. Mine, yours, Hargers, it don't matter none. Just so I get what I figure this little old world owes me for being born. All right, Jagger. You can start collecting. Right now. <laughs> Step at a time, Jack. You remember? That's what you're gonna do. All the way back. Uh, not me. Not me. There's only one more way I'm going back. And you're not man enough to do it. <laughs> Come on, you gotta eat something. Well, I will, but not until. I'm ready. You'd think I was sick or something. Senor Roddy, Senor Favor's coming in. All right, Favor, where is he? Well, he's fine, but I can't say the same for you. You let him get away. Jagger's at Split Rock. It's like I, I promised him he'd be. Anything else you want to know, you can ask the sheriff there. Now, wait a minute, Favor. Let's go, Matt. Let's go. Head him up and move him out. If I'd man, head him up and move him 
man, I would have said head him up and move him out. All I want now is some coffee, hot and black. Hot and black and uh, wishbone thick. Restraint order. Not a license to shoot drovers. You remember that. You men with that herd? Yeah. What's the problem? No problem yet. This is private property, like the sign says. Sorry. I got orders to stop. Got what? We've been through this pass a half a dozen times. I'd say that was before the owner posted it. We got 3,000 thirsty steers in back of us, and they've been saving that thirst all day, just waiting for the chance to get through this pass into water. Now, what are we supposed to do? Take them 20 miles out of the way and let the sun bake them into the ground? Look, trail boss. Now, this is Farragut land as far as the eye can see in three directions. Till you get permission to cross it, the law says the fence stays up. All right, all right, we'll do it your way. Now, uh, where's this place where we're supposed to get the permission? Farragut City, about two miles, right down that road. And uh, who are we supposed to see in Farragut City? Well, you go to the Farragut Hotel and uh, ask for E.J. Farragut. Don't it get kind of tiresome, Sheriff? What's that? Never saying nothing but Farragut. with favor. Sonny. <laughs> Sitter, stand. We won't waste time with a lot of nonsense. I already know why you're here. I expected you two days ago. If I didn't know, I would have run all the way. You'll find I planned this meeting quite thoroughly. You have a herd which needs access through Farragut land. Well, I have a paper here which will give you that privilege. Plus a guarantee of a dollar ahead bonus when you get that herd to the railhead. Does it interest you? You, uh, intend giving me something? 
afraid. You have to have something that I need. Specifically, a reputation for being a good trail boss. You work your men hard and you make them like it. I know, I've taken the trouble to find out. Okay, I hate that I don't appreciate the compliments, but this isn't getting my hurt through the past. Yes, to the point. I want you to hire my grandson as one of your drovers. Huh? You what? It's really quite simple. Billy will one day inherit an estate which I assure you is quite sizable. At the present time, he's a wild, selfish, irresponsible boy who is incapable of handling any such a responsibility. What he needs is discipline, strong discipline, the kind that a tough trail boss can give him. Ah, oh, I'm a drover, not a wet nurse. So much the better. Two months on the trail under what we could call enforced supervision might do more for Billy than I've been able to do in the 12 years since his father died. I ain't got time to take care of a greenhorn kid, did it? Perhaps not. But it could still be very profitable for you. An extra man and a dollar a head bonus. You haven't anything to lose but a little patience. I'm not too sure about that. I, um, haven't read the fine print. There is a clause in there. A protection clause, just to make sure you honor your part of the bargain. In so many words, you will turn over the herd to my representative at a dollar a head below market value. If for any reason, you should fire Billy before the end of the drive. That's a bonus for me, you might say. Oh, thanks. Uh, we'll take out the two days to go around Farragut land. That's your privilege, trail boss. Only don't try to use any of the water holes along the way. They've all been salted. Should we talk about it some more? Who's your cowboy? Uh, just a drover. His herd's out in Farragut Pass. Tell him to come over. You were told to come over to my table, Drove. No, thanks some other time. Maybe now. You hear me, Drover? On the house. No need working out a sweat just for a Drover, is there? up to sweat. Not me. That kid ought to be locked up. He sure gave you a good one, mister. Too much for you? Hey, you're real funny. Oh, some kid dented my head. Ah, oh, that clears everything up. Ten minutes on your own and you get your skull cracked. Now, let's go. No, I got some business I gotta clear up here. You got a job ramrodding, not settling saloon squabbles. Let's see. Uh, you're all right. Let's go. So 
Well, that's my new boss, huh, Granny? You'll do well to remember it, Billy. Because that boss might have considerably less patience. Ma'am? Mr. Faber, this is my grandson, Billy Farragut. We've had a long talk, Billy and I, and he understands the agreement thoroughly. Now, he's been told that he'll be treated fairly, and I expect you to make sure that he is. You have the name of my representative in Denver, and he'll contact you. Does that take care of everything? Uh, everything except getting the herd through the pass and down to water. All right, Sam, tear it down! Thank you, ma'am. All right, still your gear in the supply wagon, checking with the ramrod. Whatever you say, boss. Billy, when you were a little boy and you skinned your knee, I had to put medicine on it. And you cried because it hurt. Well, I want you to know it hurt me, too. But it made you better. And that's what this is now. It's, it's a kind of medicine. I promise not to cry, Granny. Two things I can do without cows and goodbyes. Bring you back to town. new kid you were talking about. I told him to check in with you. Yeah, well, they never did. Well, uh, seeing as how you're a ramrod, don't you think uh, you ought to check it out? Yeah, I'll see to it. Roddy. Hmm? Don't forget we got an agreement with Mrs. Farragut about her boy Billy. Don't let it slip your mind, huh? I'll treat him just like he's one of my own. Something there ain't nobody in this whole world I'd rather see than you right now, boy. Oh, no, no, there ain't gonna be no guns either. I don't need a gun. Come on, big boy, let me see what you're gonna do. You're like a big hunk of wood that needs chopping. Give me a bath, give me a 
your favor. Hey, Roddy. Yeah? What you doing there? Oh, nothing. Hey, I thought I told you not to play with that boy. <clears throat> Look, this is a personal matter, Mr. Favor. Stay out of it. Well, you let him up now, huh? This has nothing to do with the herd. No! into the ramrod. Until you learn to obey orders, you'll have to earn your keep peeling spuds. You turn your horse into the remuda and report to the cook. Right now. Sure. Whatever you say, boss. And it is for you. You've got a reason. Better be a good one. Well, that's the kid who tried to dent my skull in back in town. It was, was he? And so you thought you'd just settle up things in a nice, quiet, friendly little way, huh? That's right. Well, let me spell it out for you, Sonny. We either deliver that boy in one piece, or we stand to lose a dollar a head on every cow in the herd. Oh, it ain't that I'm especially money-hungry. But I do not intend to donate any of my share of the profits to pay for your hurt feelings. Clear? Yeah. Good. talk so far. Hey! Mr. Farragut, if you don't mind, the firewood goes by the fire. Oh, I'll remember that next time. Oh, hat full of drovers, and I gotta be the one to ride herd on a punk kid. Mr. Scar is the champion. He told me he once in and wrestled the whole Cheyenne tribe to save his scalp. All right, who's next? I'm just getting warmed up. Come on, boys. Right hand, left hand. Just take your pick. Fur bed grizzly and twice as me. Come on, you biscuit eaters. Who's going to prove he's a man? How about me, Drover? getting kind of late, boy, but I think I'll bed down. Unless you're afraid you might lose. It ain't too late at that. Anytime you're ready, kid. Got about as much chance as I have of growing a belly goat tail. Anybody see a ring? I said you had a ring on. Now, all you've got to do is prove it, Drover. Forget it, Jim.
listen while I sing of a big ugly drover and a tiny little ring. He swore he would make me lie down in the dirt. But when it was over, the drover was her. Want some coffee, Mr. Perry? I just made it fresh for a night guard. No, thanks. I bet that guitar sure costs a lot. I've never seen such a pretty one anywhere. You play it real good, too. No wishing don't do it. You gotta work at it. Tell you what. You pour me some of that coffee and I'll show you how to make this box stand up and sing. Yes, sir. Put it down. Well, you can't learn by squatting there. Sit down. Oh, easy. Give me this hand. Here. Put this finger up here. This one here. And this one here. Oh. Now, with that hand, easy. Strum it. Thanks, Mr. Burgett. new kid working out. <laughs> working isn't one of his specialties. Mushy? Look at him. He's got Mushy waiting on him hand and foot, just like he was the king of England. Next thing you know, he'll be expecting me to tuck him in every night and tell him a bedtime story. Well, nobody told you to play mother hand. I want him working just like everybody else. Especially right now, breaking camp. That is, if uh, you're through having a good cry. Mushy? I'm going down the river and pick me some mustard for a poultice. What's that? Never mind. Now, do you think that you and Mr. Farragut can interrupt your little social soiree long enough to get packed? Yes, sir. All right. What are you jumping for? The old coot just likes to hear himself squawk. You finish your coffee, Mr. Farragut. I can, I can pack up real easy. You know something, Mushy? That's the difference between you and me. You see, you ain't learned how to stand up for yourself. Now, you take me. Somebody tries to push me around, I do something about it. Well, you gotta take orders if you got a job. Sure. But it's how you take them. I say, if you're a man, you gotta act like one. Don't let people step on you. See what I mean? Sure was fast, Mr. Burgett. Wish you'd show me how you did it. Thought you wanted to learn how to play the guitar. I can't spend all my time giving you lessons on everything. Well, I guess there's so much I want to do, I don't know where to start. But I'm mighty glad you joined up with us, Mr. Burgett. I never had such a good friend as one to learn me things. You're learning.
Hey, Mushy. Think fast. <laughs> I've seen him jump before, Mushy, but you beat them all. <laughs> Mushy. What in thunder and tarnation happened to you? Um, me and Mr. Ferga. He was showing me how to draw. He was having a kind of joke. I fell on a fire. Don't you burn yourself? No, sir. It sure got hot for a minute. Well, it's going to get hotter. Now pick up those spits and put them in the wagon. Oh, yes, sir. Gonna talk to me like that no more, Mr. Wishbone. I've been doing my job same as every man on a drive. But it's time he quit stepping on me. I should never seen the guitar the way he's mooning around that fragrant kid. Well, as you got the drift of that, you know, Mushy's done got himself one of them heroes. He ain't got very much to ask me. Well, maybe we ought to point that out. Like how? But ever since that fairy got kid rode in, he's just been aching to get cut down a notch or two. Maybe we ought to do cut. What are we waiting for? Oh, real good, Mr. Scarlet, didn't you hear? Mr. Fergus is showing me all about them chords. He's gonna let me try it by myself next week. Oh, sounds like you got a real smart teacher there, Mushy. Smart enough to know you ain't interested in music. Now, what's on your mind? Oh, now, Scarlet and me, we got to feel sorry for you, Fergus. You know, riding in that wagon and all, not being able to stretch your legs. Yeah, we thought maybe we'd like to play a little chin dusting just to take out the kinks. Any game you got, Drover, I can play. How'd you like to make a bet on that? Say, about five dollars, unless you're hard-pressed. I got enough. Well, how do you play chin dusting? Well, uh, supposing you just watch and uh, hold the stakes, if that's all right with you, Fergie. It's your game, Drover. small, Frank, when you're reaching for it. Sure you don't want to back down? Maybe you better, Mr. Fergan. I don't, want to, I don't want to see you get yourself hurt. Like I said, that's the difference between you and me. Help yourself.
still think he's a fancy friend now, Marshy. Mr. Farragut! Mr. Farragut, are you hurt? Get away from me. I don't need your help. You sure came off flying, didn't you, kid? But I guess you proved you got plenty of scratch. How about shaking? You'll we'll start clean. I don't shake hands with a stinking drover now or any time. Why, you little... Come on. Try it. Give me a reason. A man don't need a gun to prove his size. I already have. Come on, Jim. I think we're disturbing Mushy and his friend. Should have took a board to both of them. You fight for me? Well, sure, ain't that what friends are for? Yeah. Well, what are you standing there for? Come on, let's get this wagon rolling. Yes, sir. Guest, no trouble. Remember? This ain't gonna be no trouble, boy. What are you two doing? Throwing pots and pans at each other? I can hear you all the way out to the herd. Uh, your boy here, he likes noise. Farragut, just because you're part of a bargain, don't make you part of this drive. It's something you're gonna earn. Till you two, somebody tells you to jump, you just ask how high. You get that? Look, Mr. Favor. For the last time, get your horse and get out to the herd. It's a real clever idea to be there next time I make my circle. Anything else, trail boss? How high, Farragut? Just remember that. How high? I guess we should be more careful about that noise, Mr. Farragut, with this being such a good time for a stampede. You ever see a stampede before? Sure can tear up a camp. Cows get pretty jumpy during a storm, don't they? Just like this, sitting on a cactus. Now here, uh, better finish up the pots. You heard what Wishbone said. Oh, it sure did. I remember hearing about one herd that stampede across the Pecos about two years ago. They said them cows was bunched up down that river for two miles. Did you ever hear about that one, Mr. Fergus?
Mr. Farragut, I thought you was riding a night guard. I was, uh, I was over at the Ramuda. My horse picked up a limp, in case anybody gets curious. I'm glad you come by. It's getting kind of lonely. I'll get you some coffee. Your horse probably grabbed a gopher hole. Yeah. Mr. Faber said they named Farragut City after your kinfolk. Must be nice having a town called after your own name. Everybody knowing who you are. There's some cold biscuits in the wagon. Want me to get you some? Oh, shut up. All you do is talk, and you don't say nothing. I'm just trying to be friendly, Mr. Farragut. What for? Why? Because I thought we were friends. Why pick on me? I don't know exactly. Guess because you've been real good to me. You learned me something about playing a guitar and fast drawing. How I shouldn't let the people step on me. Up to now, nobody cared whether I learned any of these things or not. And do you think I do? Sure, why wouldn't you take my part? I don't know, Mushy. Unless, unless maybe I need a friend too.
wagon fell on him and I... Well, he's dead. seem to be any good reason why a man has to go get himself killed. What I mean is, we all got our own special time when God says we got to die. This just happened to be his time. We all got to face whatever grief comes to us. We can't just give up. No, sir, Mr. Richman. sits there staring off into nowhere. I can't do a thing. Hey, just leave him be. Nothing anybody can do. You gonna be able to put this mess back together? Well, I suppose if you don't mind having dirt in your cornmeal for the next two months. Do what you can. Mr. Favor! That's what I found out by the herd. Give it the way from. No, sir. This is something you've got to see. This knife. I found it stuck in the tree right over a pile of rocks. This pot was hung so that when wind blew, like that. I thought I heard something before those bees were let out, and I decided to nose around. It doesn't take much to see what that initial belongs to either. Mr. Billy Farragut. I wonder what Mushy thinks of his friend now. No quits. He ain't gonna help Mushy any of tell. Well, the kid got what he deserved. Was Billy a good drover? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was fine. Just fine. When he was 13 years old, he made a whip out of a piece of leather he found in the barn. I remember how hard he practiced to make that crack through the air like a rifle. He was so proud of that whip. And then one day, I found some blood stains in the back of his closet where the whip had smeared against the wall when he tried to hide it. You know, he could never give me any reason why he killed it. The dog wasn't even barking at him. He was just walking by. You're not a very convincing liar, Mr. Favor. How could I expect you to change the sickness that was inside of Billy when I couldn't do it? I'll take my grandson home now. Mr. Faber, about our agreement. It'll be honored as specified when you get to dinner. Something good should come from that. Mr. Busby? Mrs. Farragut, wait! Mr. 
this was Mr. Farragut's man. He was teaching me how to play it. We was friends. You were his friend? Yes, I am. Friendships should always be remembered, don't you think so, young man? Yes, ma'am. Well, then you keep that. I'm glad Billy has someone like you to remember him. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Busby.